but welcome to the uh to the winter that you're experiencing for the first time in a while so yeah it's a thing it's a thing driving <laughs> the, it's something to concentrate on <laughs> when's the last time you thought about snow tires i saw that video where you pulled the uh the africa jeep out of storage and and you put not just like all terrains but actual winters on it yeah, no, having not driven on the snow for like two and a half years, I decided that I better go for real winter tires so that when I was sliding into a ditch, I would say, well, <laughs> I mean, at least I tried. Yeah. <laughs> a for effort. Maybe not for execution, yeah. but, you know. That's right. Yeah, it's it's an, an entirely different animal so, in, uh, in the ice and the snow. As well, my, my, my favorite, well, it snowed here today, which they canceled school, which is just an abomination of horrible because all the roads were clear by like 9.45 in the morning. I was like, we couldn't have done a late start. Like we could have like get all these kids out of my house. But um, yeah, my favorite snow fact is that the best coefficient, oh man, coefficient, coefficient of, fri of friction on snow is snow. Correct. Which is why open <laughs> log tires do better in and on snow because they pack more snow in and they create more friction. I feel Dan like doesn't I, believe it. I, I feel like I just went like mind equals blown. I'm like, what? what, what? I, yeah. I don't. Okay. That's that why sense. something like a Goodyear Duratrac does better than uh, like a KO2 in the snow because it basically. Over the same surface the area, holds more snow, packs more snow in, and grips more. I mean, the only thing we can say is that you know there are studded tires, which right <laughs> throws the conversation out the window. But that that's no longer uh, a coefficient of friction. That's just spikes. Yes, <laughs> okay. yes. Yeah, it turns out pointy things are really good at grabbing onto other things, as uh, no. ice climbers and ice skaters and yeah, all those people know. So yeah. So Ross, do yeah. you have any updates? Um, a couple updates. So I spent last week with the Cadillac CT5e Blackwing. And Ooh. as of this conversation, the review is on Hooniverse. And uh, it is a glorious, glorious machine. Um, <laughs> I mean, the last CTSV was spectacular. The CTSV before that was spectacular. Like the CTSV has always just kind of been like an M5. If you, you know, pull 20 grand worth of uh, fit and finish and, and material quality out and add 10 of that back in engine and the <laughs> black wing is exactly that it is uh it is not slow it is surprisingly agile for something you know the size of what's effectively a five series and it makes some awesome noises so yes it does that was that was a good time um that left and has been replaced by the Land Rover Defender 130, which, as Doug mentioned, is troubling to look at. <laughs> it's <laughs> not ideal, I think, is the phrase. The rear hangover behind the rear axle is enormous. Like <laughs> it is. It has well, a, yeah, it's a full size SUV yeah. designed to hold more crap. Welcome to suburban land. Um, yes, but as we <laughs> had a conversation about, suburban wheelbase is stretched versus Tahoe wheelbase. D130 yes. wheelbase is not stretched versus D110 wheelbase. So they just went and just bumped the back out, and it is, you know, um, the good thing is that it doesn't change anything about the way the Defender acts or drives or behaves in any way because that is very good. The not so good thing is that you have to look at it. <laughs> um, yeah. It's you have, yeah, it's a lot of of untouched metal back there. So, uh, so so Dan Ross put this picture in our Car Guy Universe Slack channel, and everybody was like, "Oh my god, it's so gross!" And I was like, "Guys, it looks totally normal to me. I'm sorry, because yeah. I, I live in large extended SUV land all you the live time, in, like, in three rail land." Yeah, I have to have three rows plus cargo. Now, I will argue, this isn't long enough. It needs like another foot to get me to where I could then have enough space yeah. approaching suburban. Uh, <laughs> then then you're not looking in Land Rover land. That is not, no. not how it goes. So I didn't even realize this is the new 130. It does not have a 130-inch wheelbase. It does not. Oh, does not. It, I, it I had no idea they did that. What they call the 110-inch wheelbase. Yeah. I see. I see. So yeah, mm -hmm. there, there there is no one thirty, you know, officially, although like kind of like no. in the old school. 
it is a sales proposition and yep. i mean as we all know they'll probably sell every single one of them because it's got it it walks the walk and it you know looks the look yep um I didn't. Okay, I am not a Land Rover guy. I didn't know they were numbers based on wheelbase. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, genius. Like the Defender ninety, the two door ninety, yeah, the 110, 110 inch mm-hmm. wheelbase, and then one hundred thirty inch wheelbase. Yep. Like that was yeah. you know since I went was that nineteen fifty nineteen sixty. Yeah, so yeah. after it came off like Series Two, then they started with the, the yeah. wheelbase based things. Yeah, so. Yeah, the the one thirty that's not a one thirty still drives like one ten, just with okay. more to deal with on the you know departure angle. Right, so there it is. Yeah, that's right. Uh, departure angle yeah. of horrible, but oh otherwise it's 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 not good. It's like a gladiator. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> it's sore subject, eh? No, I'm <laughs> just kidding. Uh, yeah, so that's my that's my uh, press car update. Other updates. Um, Accessorides was kind enough to send over a remote start kit for the Lexus, which is uh, kind of a sore subject on my side because Lexus did this stupid thing where they incorporated remote start into a 3G service. And then they- I'm sorry? They incorporated their remote start into a 3G service. So when they stopped their 3G service, the remote start ability completely disappeared. Um, so it was so, like a subscription model type thing. As long as you paid to continue the 3G, you kind of. got to keep your remote start? To a point. And then when they no longer participate in that 3G capability, the remote start capability is completely gone. There is no remote start for the GX460. <laughs> uh, so Accessorides makes a plug and play kit and they were kind of sent it over and I'm going to hopefully get it installed this Saturday. Um, You're going to should... plug and play it. I'm gonna plug and play it, which entails pulling off part of my dashboard, and uh, and hopefully the weather is you know above 40 degrees. So, yes, thank you, Accessorides, um, in advance. And this is what it looks like. Oh, <laughs> yes, it is. It is. Does a it wiry dongly thing? Does and do it you know now? A... No, you go, Dan. Sorry, do you know now? Is that a 4G remote start, or is it a traditional um, <laughs> old like remote like we used it to is, have? It is paired directly to the OEM Lexus key fob. It is okay. not tied into any other <laughs> service. So, I was like, the Suburban has yeah. 4G LTE that I pay for every month. Yes, you have Wi-Fi. We know, but it's so my kids can stream stuff and leave me alone for yes. the bit of time. The best is when you drive through like. Uh, n- dead zones in Montana, and they're like, "What are we gonna do?" And I'm like, "Watch the DVD player that's actually <laughs> in the view." Like, they're so spoiled. Like, it's just disgusting. See, my kid's streaming service is she looks in the mirror that I have mounted on the headrest, and it basically shows what's coming up on the road in front of her in the opposite direction. So. <laughs>